The Bamboo Project Podcast starts in three, two. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. My name is Donovan Gray, the future ten billion dollar man. On the way to ten billion, I decided that I am going to help create one thousand millionaires, including myself, and not by being a guru or selling a course, but by doing the things I already love to do every day and documenting my journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray, and this is how I will turn my life into a living. We made different playlists for all the things we are into, and you can find all of those links in the description box below. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is chapter four, page 187. Before we get into the topics of the day, we always start off with screen time. That is when me and my baby girl check our phone to see how much time we spent on it last week. Because if we are not taking advantage of our phone, then our phone is taking advantage of us and we can't have that. Okay, last week, every day, I spent an average of seven hours and 32 minutes on my phone each day. I said that's closer to the not the best side, but it's still fairly low because it's almost close to six hours, maybe. I was gonna say closer to six than it is eight, but it's actually closer to eight than it is six. That's irrelevant, that's irrelevant. Seven and a half hours plus two minutes is decent. It's like, eh, it's a little close to the bad, but it's eh. Six, I said, is good. Five is amazing, all right? So I spent nine hours and 12 minutes on X last week. Then I spent eight hours and 24 minutes on TikTok and seven hours and 19 minutes on the mail app. That's not a pretty good uh, combination of apps I have right here. I can't lie. I picked up my phone on average 96 times per day. My first use app after pickup was mail, then YouTube, and then sleep IQ. Okay, baby girl, what was your screen time like last week? Last week, I spent... Mm. When, when, when does last week start? When your phone says last week. It seems like I fell asleep on my phone. Oh my, here we go. I did. Uh-huh, sure. So, last week, I spent 9 hours and 44 minutes on my phone. Uh-huh. It's up 24% from the week before. My most used app is TikTok. What did I say last week? Like, 8, maybe? I don't know. It was kind of high. So then I spent 22 hours on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I spent 10 hours on Gmail, nine, uh, 10 hours on Instagram, 6 hours on music. Um, my first use app after I picked up my phone was Gmail. Then messages, then music, then TikTok. Now for the subscriber check on two of our YouTube channels. Okay. On the Bamboo Project, we are at 6,641 subscribers. And... On the candle channel, okay, you guys, we are at 636. Now, I don't know what number I said last week, but I will say I think this is probably at least the last week or two has been our highest subscribe to week. We've been putting out some bangers. YouTube been rocking with it. We've been getting views, subscribers, almost half of the videos that we posted are at a thousand views which is more than we have subscribers on that channel so that's a good sign to me i think we have a little bit more tweaking to do to get the either to get the watch time up to get the views up and get the subscribers up but i think if we can put out if we do we have two more months left two and a half more months if we do like two or three more sit down videos, we'll get to a thousand subscribers pretty easily. Like I'm very convinced that we have like our first video that we sat down and did got 4,000 views. The second one we did got 2,000 something views. Mind you, those were when we were at 100 subscribers, 130 subscribers, something like that. So that's, I'm, I'm very confident that if we did that, it would just take off and we'll make a, a bunch of subscribers and money. Let's get into the podcast. Howdy, you guys. So I would say... Last week has been a pretty, it's been, it was an okay week. I can't lie. We had some good news. I guess we have some bad news as well, which depending on how I'm feeling might be in the title. I'm not really sure yet, but I guess I can start off with what might be considered the bad news. So as you all know, if you don't know, that means you're new and thank you for joining the Bamboo Project family. Uh, but for everyone else who has been here for a long time, y'all know that about, which is crazy. Has it been, it's almost we bought the house two years, three years ago. 
Isn't that crazy? It's insane. We bought that house three years ago. Three years ago. Think about that, guys. Think about yeah, all the things you heard about the house, the stories, the the go us going out there, the videos you guys seen. That was three years ago. Last year was when it finally got renovated. The year before that would have been 2021. That's crazy. We bought the house in 2020. That's crazy. Because we met in 2018. And then we moved it in 2019. We spent that year. Like, is it is it fast? Because that, because I, like, looking back on it timeline-wise, it seems like a long time ago. But it also seems like it wasn't that long ago. Does that make sense to y'all? To say that Melissa and I... We met each other on October like 15th, I think it was. Was it 15th or 7th? 15th, right? Or 14th? I think, yeah, I think it was maybe like the... I think it was the 14th. Okay. Right, so it's like October 14th, we met. And then we have this uh, whirlwind of relationship. We going on vacations, you know. We buying nice stuff. Then we move into a nice building, a new luxury apartment. We got new... We got almost floor to ceiling windows. We working, Right. And then from there, in that, in that same year, we both quit our jobs for the most part. And then by the next year, we're buying a house. That's not crazy. No, is it? When did we buy the house? 2020, 2021. I feel like it was 2021. Let me check my Instagram. It might be 2021. I think it's 2021. Because I think 2019, that's when we moved in. Mm hmm. So what were we doing all of 2020? 2020 was like YouTube. You were still figuring out kind of the bike. Um, and toward the end of 2020 was like wholesale. You, you got took the course um, about like wow. houses, like just about real estate, remember? It was like that. Yeah, I think 2020 was us trying to figure out what, not what we wanted to do, but kind of what direction to go in. I think we were trying to figure out what would take us to what we wanted to do. Like, what would be the 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 vehicle that would get us to where we're trying to get to? Right. And at the time, which I'm very, I am very different now in terms of. Too. Yeah, in terms of what I want. I remember back then, if you watch the podcast, I'm probably saying things along the lines of, I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to make $200 a month. And then I'm going to buy a second house. I'm going to make $500 a month, right? Um, that was probably me back then. I was talking about, I was probably saying this is going to be passive income and, you know, that word. So, as I said, I think if you ever hear me start saying that word, then y'all need to send me this podcast. Because I don't believe that there is any such thing as, I mean, I would say passive income. The only thing I might say would be uh investing and to be honest i don't st i still don't necessarily know how i call it pa i guess i guess it's passive income i was gonna say that if i put in like yeah yeah i don't know i was gonna say if i put in a lot of work like five years of work into one year and then i get five years of return on that work or 10 years of return on that work does that count as passive income or from my experience for everybody that has has quote unquote passive income they're still working like there is no just sit down and do nothing unless you have a ridiculous amount of money like bill gates and then you own stocks and they take the money out but then that's not even really income but I guess you get dividends so yeah i guess i guess if you have a very large amount of dividends that would be considered passive income where you don't have to invest anymore you just live off of the returns that you get from your one investment like I said, we bought that house, uh, we tried to flip it, things did not go as we planned, and we pretty much lost the house, right, for the most part. Um, so, I think that Sega is almost coming to a close. We just received some documentation that they are planning on auctioning off the house, and if I'm correct... Because Melissa looked at the paper, I didn't look at it. It said that we owe one hundred and sixty-seven thousand eight hundred dollars, roughly. It's more than that. 
okay what number did they, they just say on there Okay, so like two hundred thousand dollars. That's the amount of the loan plus the uh, that is the amount of the house cost and the construction cost plus the fees that we have incurred over the last um, year or so. And I would be interested to see how much they're gonna get for selling it because uh, if they get two hundred thousand for it, that would be kind of cool. But like I said, you know. I don't know what they get for. I don't know. I have no idea what condition the house is in right now. There could be people living there. It definitely probably got roaches, mice, mold. Like the house is probably worth what we bought it for when we first got it at this point. Just because of how the market has went, like the market has gone down. The house has been messed up. It's just kind of like it's been broken into and all types of foolishness. So, you know. Like I said, that seems to be it. But like I said, they gave us the documentation. So that is pretty much the last thing that we have to shed from our past uh, because it's not necessarily, I mean, that in the debt, it's not necessarily holding us back per se. But again, like I said, it's, I want to get to a point where the only thing I have in my mind is the future and things I'm trying to do. That's literally it. That's it. That's all I want. And... Yeah, it's a big stack. This, this is the stack that they sent over here, guys. Look at this. I don't know if you can see it, this stack over here. It's a lot of paper. Um, okay, so Melissa said that they're going to sell it November 7th. So, you know, I guess we'll have a party or maybe like a funeral. I don't know which I want to have for it. And that's probably like two or three weeks. <sighs> very unfortunate to a very... It was a very unfortunate situation and there isn't much that we could do now um but just kind of keep moving forward for us to, imagine if we we're trying to pay the monthly mortgage that would even make any sense like to just keep trying to hold on to the house paying the at that time i think it went up to like sixteen seventeen hundred dollars a month so you'd have been paying that and we would have been paying $1,700 a month at Artists and Fleas. It would have been crazy. Plus, trying to manage running the business, it would have just been stupid. Um, but, you know, just for anybody that is flipping a house or wants to flip a house, the things that I learned the most are be on top of the people working at the house. I think that's one of the most important things I've learned. And I would also say to have people that have done it. Um... I think that's also a good thing just to be able to talk to them and get some insight. And it's the interesting thing about that too is that I had that, but even it's it would be better to have them than to not have them, but to think that they would be a silver bullet is also not true either. Because a lot of the people that I talked to weren't in a similar situation to me or could really help out in what I needed because of the distance that I was at from the person or the money that was needed or just the timeliness of it. Because one of the big issues I feel like we ran into was doing this very quickly. And that is something we learned from YouTube and we kind of got stuck in a situation where we wanted to wholesale the house. And then I thought, okay, maybe we can keep the house. But everything we learned about flipping a house or wholesaling a house was about getting the contract flipped to Jerry Norton or to a wholesaler in about 10 to 15 days. So in that time period, we couldn't even get the loan for the house without having a construction um, uh, budget. And I couldn't get a construction budget without talking to a contractor. So, and I couldn't get a contractor to give me a budget that fit into the number I already had made for the house. So it was kind of like, okay, well, I had, let me just say this actually. I had him going to the house trying to figure out what it would cost to renovate the house. The number he gave me was 75K. So I took that number and then I tried to figure out, okay, how much could I, should I buy it for? What would it sell for? And this is a, a fault in me because I think I have a tendency of being very nice and very lenient. So I think that because he had did things for us, he had went to different properties for us. He had did a lot of things. I had kind of promised him. I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. Y'all let me know if you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I had kind of agreed like, okay, you're looking for these houses for me. You're giving me quotes. When I do find one, I'm going to give you the, the house to do the renovation for. 
And again, you don't know what you don't know. So I didn't know what kind of contract he would have been or what we would have needed, what we would have ran into. But us trying to flip the house that quickly, we got stuck with a budget that doesn't really assess the actual value of the house in terms of what needs to be done. Um, we got stuck with a contractor that isn't, he wasn't really involved in it in terms of this is his main priority. It wasn't that. And then, like I said, that whole process, the, the thing that, that, that right there really messed us up because we then couldn't switch contractors, which is the really, which is really the bad part about it because they, whoever we switched to would have to give us the same exact budget we had from the first one. Otherwise the lender wouldn't release a draw for us because they would say that the money is too high or the the price is too high to renovate the house. So we just, like I said, it was a very weird thing that happened and we tried to make the best of it. I think we did okay. You know, we didn't really come out too scarred, I guess. Would you say we came out? How do you think we came out, babe? You feel like we came out okay? You feel like we came out? <laughs> what would you say? Mm-hmm. And like, um, I probably wouldn't do any renovations. Mm. I probably would do like. No, I don't think that's true. I, I probably, um, I probably wouldn't do any renovations. Honestly, I, I think it like. I don't even really like houses anymore now. <laughs> right. Well, I was gonna say that. Would you? But what if we bought a place to do pop ups at? Right. That's not a house. That's renov- you should have renovations. Oh, um, that's different. So maybe that, uh, maybe I won't do, I wouldn't do residential. Mm. I probably more so want to focus on commercial Mm. because residential is too much. At least with commercial, like there's money coming in that's like, you know, legal money. Like there, there shouldn't be a whole bunch of stuff to deal with. What do you mean? In terms of, like, laws when it comes to, you know, how I explain it. I think I think when it comes to laws and stuff like that, it's different. It's different for uh, B two B than it is B two C. Mm-hmm. So, um, because like in, an example, what most people do when they have a house and they want to rent it out, they put on Airbnb. Airbnb isn't really like a regulated place. Mm-hmm. And until now it is, and now it's regulated. I feel like with commercial, the laws are already there. It shouldn't be that hard to follow. If I need to kick somebody out, it's not going to be a long, drawn out process. I don't think, as it is with mm-hmm. uh, resident someone's home. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how I'm seeing it. Yeah, I said for me, I it was just it was a very weird situation, and I think. I have no idea where we would have been. And I I always even look at it as we were supposed to be here. Who we are put us in that situation that we were in before. So we couldn't, we wouldn't have been anywhere else than we are at now. That, cause that's just our personalities that there was nothing else. Everything that we had learned up until that point in terms of our life and experiences put us in a situation where we would end up trying to buy a house and flipping it at that age and that quickly in that circumstance. And, you know, we have the candles from it. So in the last 12 months, we did 100K. So it's not terrible because we may not, I don't I don't know. If we would have tried to wholesale, I have friends who have wholesaled who have done a deal or two and have done a deal for another several months. I've had friends who do, who have done, a ridiculous amount of deals who make a lot of money from wholesaling so but it's all and they're they're trying to get into actually buying a house so who knows imagine we would have wholesaled and then tried to buy a house and had a bigger house with same problem right it's, it's i i don't know we could have also made a bunch of money been millionaires by now too right that could also happen all i try to do is think about it and go okay what did i learn from it what can i apply to whatever's coming up next and don't don't let it be a waste of an experience 
And also, it was great for content. Like, this is great for when we finally make it over the hill and people will look back in our story. It's going to be really crazy. Like, when you really look at, like, when I get a chance, you know, we have a lot of money and we have time and <laughs> resources to allocate to having someone compile all of our content, it's going to be crazy. There are very few people. If I could, maybe, I can only think of maybe one or two people who have what we have. There are people who have documented their journey to become rich in that business. So they're going, okay, um, I want to drop ship. So I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you me learning how to drop ship. Or I want to start a marketing agency. I'm going to show you my process of starting a marketing agency. And they, they become millionaires. But I don't really see people actually show the personal life side of it where me and Melissa, where me and Melissa are talking about day to day stuff. We're talking about relationship. We're talking about not having food for not having money for groceries. We're talking about just non business related things on the podcast and just life stuff. And then we're also vlogging it. So it's not just having a podcast. There are videos to go along with a lot of what we talk about on the podcast. So I don't really know of anybody that has something like that. So because that's going to be a one of one thing, then we can actually allocate those videos very differently than other people. We can create multiple storylines for content across multiple channels. It could be on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, where we could talk about, we could clip up our uh, tour journey, or we can make clips about our Airbnb journey, or we can make clips about our flipping a house journey, or our wholesale journey, or our candle journey, or our relationship journey, or our vacation journey, or moving in together journey, or being a bike message. Like, there, each one of those things has its own web that can create its own situation, like its own thing. I could say, I could see headlines right now, like from bike messenger to hundred million dollar person. Uh, uh, f what would they say? Lost X amount of dollars on this house and then bought a hundred million dollar house. Like it goes on and on. And then once I have that kind of stuff, the videos just become this big snowball effect where once you come to the eco space of watching an older video and then you see like, okay, they were here at this point and now they are all the way over here. That's crazy. Let me watch this video to see what's on here. Then you start watching the videos. Then you start watching the podcast. Now you get at this point we have money, so you see all the different shorts. Then we start doing things where we're big, we're on the news, we're having publications write about us, and it's just having a TV show. It's just huge. It's, it's writing books. It's it's crazy. It's and then at the time you'll still be able to see us doing that, but further along the line. So. So I always look at it and just say it's, it's going to be a crazy thing when that time actually comes. But as of right now, we're almost at the time where the house is completely finished and done. I would hope by the end of this year it's done and we can go into 2020 for the clean slate. That's what I'm hoping for. Like, that's what I want. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Yeah, also know, uh, update-wise, that we recently won a pitch competition for $15,000. So clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. Thank you. Clap it up, clap it up. So I was looking at the other one that we won. Because it's technically, we've won two, right? Like, there are two that we have successfully won. The first one, second place. This one tied for first. Right, so that means the next one should be first place, and they pay you through PayPal, which I, I don't know if y'all know. Is I hate PayPal and I hate uh, Shopify and Square. I hear I, I hear too many horror stories about people making a lot of money and them not giving them the money. I've heard so many stories about that, so I'm not a fan of a lot of those companies for that reason. Maybe you're not know, on my own bank or something like that in the future. It's my own processor company, and. The first time that we won, we won. They gave us a DocuSign on the 25th of May. If I don't know what that is, it's pretty much it's a contract to receive the money. So that time we signed a contract on the 25th. I wanted to see last night because I was getting antsy. I'm like, when is this money coming in? And when I checked, when the money was deposited, they deposited it last time on the same day. Like we, the money was deposited on May 25th after the DocuSign was signed. And that was the same day. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, that's really crazy. So we just got the DocuSign yesterday. So the money hasn't come into our account yet, but 
I'm hoping because it was Friday that it that they process or give us a DocuSign that it'll come in on Monday, which means that we're a, a way ahead of schedule in terms of when we would get the money, which means we can actually make a lot of moves before the end of the year. So I'm very, very excited about that. Like I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I'm telling you, we have so many moves that we're trying to make. Like there's so many things that we can do with 15K. To, like, to, to really leverage the business, there are so many things that we can do. And the biggest one is the freedom of time like and not having to worry about that. Because there are some people who watch the podcast who, ha- who understand this, who are either living through it now or may have lived in it before. But there are also other people who watch the podcast who have never experienced what I'm talking about right now with what me and Melissa have to go through. Where it's, we don't have, no, like, there's no money for food. Like, I'm, like, there's literally no money for food. That we're sitting in the house like, all right, we got... Maybe if you count ten dollars of money for food, twenty dollars money for food, we might go to the store and buy bread or something, and come in the house and just eat that and go about our day, and maybe get uh, some ramen for a dollar and some cereal, right? And we will still try to pace ourselves in eating that food. So we wake up, we'll be hungry, like all right, I should be working, but I haven't eaten. I'm kind of hungry. Do I want to buy food? Should I go to the vending machine? Because I know how that goes. Give me a pop tart, some ginger ale, and just start working. Or should Melissa go to the store, get some bread, come back, get some pop tarts, some cereal from the store, come back here, and th- this that thought process and being in that state is detrimental to us trying to actually move forward because we're thinking about food, we're hungry, we're annoyed, we're arguing with each other about like you know silly stuff that doesn't really matter. But at the end of the day, we're both hungry, so it's kind of like it's, it is what it is. But now with the fifteen thousand, if any time, because it may, some of y'all may not even notice that we currently get EBT and food stamps from the city, right? So because of that, like if that, if that doesn't come in, which it has happened multiple times since we've gotten it. With the fifteen k, it's like all right, it's not going to be here for a week or two. We still we have two hundred dollars to put to buying food. Like we'll be fine, and we don't have to worry about that. We can continue just working on whatever we're working on, and just keep doing that. So that's a big thing. And then also in terms of the company and just being able to buy things that actually move us forward, like photography equipment or upgrading the candles in terms of the materials that we use for it, uh, being able to use subscriptions that we could either do for email marketing or for AI image generating or whatever we're doing. These things are not really expensive. They might be like $60 a month here or $30 a month here or $40 a month here, $20, $19, whatever. However, the problem is that a lot of times, even as it, as it stands right now today, they will be charging our account randomly. So we'll think we have you know, $100 left to either spend on food or to buy some, some new equipment. And then we get a random charge that takes out 40% of that money or 70% of that money. And it'd be a huge gut blow when that happens. With the 15K, we don't even think about that. Like it doesn't even, it doesn't matter. It has, it doesn't, it has no bearing on us because $40 is nothing to 15K. $100 is nothing to 15K. So if that happens, like, all right, I can look at it and go, boom, we lost 100K and we lost $100 because this subscription was still active. I can now deactivate it and that's it. It's done, right? And I have to worry about another, another transaction that I forgot to deactivate, taking the next lump money, some of the money I got for whatever I got it from either a refund or whatever or a sale. So that that I'm really excited for. And if it comes in on Monday, I will be even more excited. Now, the reason why I'll be even more excited is because we just had a conversation with Logical Positions. So Logical Positions is a, I would call them a marketing agency, right? Maybe marketing, I don't know. They run ads. So what that means is when it comes to retargeting, when it comes to how to build a campaign, when it comes to keyword research and SEO and all that good fun stuff, that's their wheelhouse. That's what they do, right? So we are hiring them to do that for us. They charge $700 a month. The only, well, it's, they charge $700 a month, but we had told them we would spend $1,000 in ads. So technically, we will be paying $1,700 a month to them to do that. That doesn't even kill us because if we were trying to do that before, we would be drowning trying to pay them that money without having a 15K. We would try to figure it out, but it would literally be, okay, we, we just got three sales, don't use that money, pay logical positions, and they were not going to eat for a day or two till the, uh, the, the food stamps come in and then go and buy some food with that. 
now whenever that money come in we're not we're not worrying about that and i had a conversation with them over the last week right during that conversation they were really informational and really informed me a lot about the process of running ads and that was one of the main reasons why i chose to go with them is because they said during a sales call like we were going to train you how to do this yourself and that's a big thing for me because i do want to know what's going on so that i can make i can add my tweaks or at least we can work in tandem on getting the best result because i you know ads but i know the candle space so i know we're looking for i know ember candle so i'm gonna try and give you the most that i can but i don't know what you need or what language i should give that to you in right so being able to talk to him in their language and understand what they're looking for what they're doing is very beneficial so teaching me that kind of stuff lets me help them help me and i'm looking very much forward to it we had a phone call this week and we were on the phone for maybe like half an hour going through it and i they said that we would start on monday which again fingers crossed if the check comes in on monday from the pitch competition then that means that we can start that process on monday and they said this is the only thing i haven't really liked so much about them what they have told me and you know i've heard it from other people who are in the space but they said we won't really see returns for like like 60 days maybe like 60 like 60 to 90 days and i'm like if we didn't have the 15k that would be a big issue because every dollar that we spend has to be spent to leverage like 10 20 50 dollars every single dollar we spend has to do that so with the 15k we don't we can actually put money to learning stuff and not having to worry about losing it so like if we say okay let's try um some affiliate marketing program we could see like okay this is part of it is working that part of it is not working and we can move forward from there and we can actually test different people and pay them without having to worry about damn they didn't work out that we lost 250 let's not do that no more it's like this class this is a big freeing event and i know a lot of people out there would are probably i don't know if a lot of people i don't know that i know there are people who are in similar situations that we are in that would get 15k and it would change their life so i said we hopefully we got the 15k and now our our next step is to make sure that it changes our life right now Okay, guys, y'all know we're also in a looming eviction. Okay, there's a lot going on over here in the Bamboo Project. Now, we have to apply for the one shot deal. Uh, someone called me yesterday that works in, I think it's housing support or tenant support or something to that effect, and they were pretty much telling me what I should do for the upcoming court case on the 30th. Because for me, I'm not really sure. What to expect from the process like do we go there and they say okay you got to move out do we go there and they say okay you gotta move out by the end of the year can we pay a like a hundred dollars and we stay can we pay a thousand dollars and we stay like what would it be and if so what would be our next move once that comes what she's recommending to me is what's called a one-shot deal which is just i believe they would pay for all of the arrears for people who don't know what that means arrears is just money that's owed they would fully cover that right so if we could find a way to successfully get the one shot deal that means that they would pay off everything that we've already owed for the house and i guess at that point we have to start paying rent which hopefully we're making enough money to do that keep my fingers crossed again um however however she did say to me she said that they have she would she would look into a housing voucher for me so I had to ask her, like, what is a housing voucher and how does it work? She said, well, with the housing voucher, right, they would cover about, I think they said 70% of the rent. And that may either be here or in some other place, whether it be in this building or a lottery building or something else, some other type of place. They would cover 70% of the of the monthly rent. So, you know, like I said, if we could, the trifecta right now would be to get the one-shot deal. 
and get the housing voucher. So we're only paying three hundred dollars a month. However, let me ask you this. Yes. What would you? What? Cause I would. If we got a housing voucher, I would. Damn. I know you want to move. Cause I'm like, it came to me right now. Oh. We would stay in this building, get another apartment like upstairs probably. That's a one or two bedroom with the housing voucher. Oh, why this building? Because the process of trying to get another place, they probably would require documentation that we don't really have. I don't, a credit score that's not uh, two digits. What's your credit score? A five. That's terrible. What my credit score is a five fifty. These are terrible numbers. But you were working on your credit. Right. It's this. So you just have to, we would have to pay the $500 and your credit would be up. Yeah, it's not that quick, but sure. I the, mean, we would just have to take them to court. That's not a, I don't think that's just a one, two. She says said somebody did it and then they got it. She, right. But I don't think that, every, if that was the case, everybody would just do that. She kind of made it seem like. you. I know she made it seem that like that. Person, so. Right, they went to court, but again, I I don't necessarily I don't believe that that's the case. Because if that was the case, she would just say, "Hey, give me three thousand dollars. We are gonna go to court. I'm gonna get you your credit score to eight hundred. That would be the business model." That's more or less what she was saying. Like it, it seems like whatever resources that she has, and that's another thing too. I don't know if it costs extra to do that. Mm -hmm. And if that's a lot of work for fake but she said it multiple times like you know if, it, if you feel like it's taking too long we could do that she's like she literally said that all right sure i guess i said i would i'm so open to the idea i am not confident that we will go to court and get 800 credit score it, it don't have to be 800 and that's the, that's the other thing too like if if i am a section eight or like voucher program mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the people that I'm trying to help probably don't have good credit. So the threshold that we need to have probably isn't even that high. It would probably be like, they might need a minimum credit score of a 500 or a 600, which we're not that far from. Yeah, 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 I said, I, that, that would, so you would not want to stay in this Absolutely building? Absolutely not. Okay, so what would you want to do? Where would you, do you have an idea? So, Where? because, so, okay. Because she said, like, we can, we can do the voucher thing, I'm like, okay, you are in the city. You know that we are, like, okay, there's a list, like, there's, like, a line of people that are waiting to get housing. Mm -hmm. I've already applied to multiple, um, multiple lotteries. I'm pretty sure it's, like, a first come, first serve, like, type of thing just on the website. Mm -hmm. But then if you have a connect on the inside or someone that's like, okay, I know this is your situation, your lumen eviction, these are the places you're interested in, I'm going to pull some strings and see if I can get you inside because I know you're losing your house now. That's what you're hoping for? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I think that could be possible. Who would be the person on the inside? Her? Yes. You think she has lottery connects? She literally said, like, because that's the same thing. Is it not? I don't think so. How is it not the same thing? I thought it was the same thing. I don't know how it was. I don't know how you figured that. I don't know how you got the same thing from it. I don't know. I don't know how you got that. Okay, what does Section 8 do? They cover your rent. And it doesn't matter where you live now? Um, usually the building has to, the owner of that building has to be, like, accept right. Section 8. So, typically those lottery buildings are like, it's like that. Um... And this building already has lottery participants in it, so they could just pay hours. But they could also, if we're telling them like the rent is too high, which it is, and how do I explain it? Uh, we work from home, so we need a we need office a office space instead of a studio. They'd probably be like, hmm, okay, we could probably accommodate you move into another place because the rent is going to be cheaper in the other place anyways. Um, like instead of them paying, like, the way that I see it, it could go either way where it's like, okay, they could offer to pay a percentage of whatever they're paying here mm -hmm. or they could put us in a new place and virtually do the same thing. Like, what's the difference if I want to get a bigger place? 
I mean, listen, that's very optimistic. I, so? yes, yes, because I'm like, I we would have to say, hey, miss, pull some strings, because that's probably illegal, but pull some strings to get me into this no, l- lottery like, no, that's like that. <laughs> random. No, it's not like that. Okay. It's more so if they're looking, they will. They probably give priority to people who are about to be like kicked out. Maybe, but it would, wouldn't be a lottery then. But you know. Sure, but it's something similar to it, and then the the lottery building still count as that because that's where they would place you. Um. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, listen, I would hope I would love that to happen. I would love to be living in a very nice two bedroom paying three hundred dollars a month. People are doing that right now. I didn't say that they're not. Right, that's what I'm saying. But I didn't say that that would be our situation. I said I would love that. Cause I am trying to figure out how do we get from where we are at to paying at a, to get a two bedroom paying three hundred dollars a month. It's, it's not gonna be three hundred, it's probably like eight. Sure, whatever. Whatever number is it's low. Right. Right? I'm trying to see how do we get from A to B, to A to C. So what? What am I doing? What do you mean? What are you doing? I'm like, why are you saying that? Cause I don't know how to get from A to C. That's what I said. You I don't. Gotta talk to them. You gotta be like, hey, can you do this? Is this possible? This is a possibility. Sure, yeah. but then, but yes, but that's not how we're talking about. We're talking about it as if like these are things that are possible that can happen. Oh no no no! This is more real to me than that. What's From more- what I heard on the phone, I feel like this could be very possible, like well, more likely than just. A possibility. It's right. That's what you, that's what I just said. You said right. That's what you're saying. You're saying this is not like a possible thing. This is a thing that can. Pro- this is you're saying this is a very probable thing. I do think so. Right. I am saying that I do not think that. Why don't you think? Because that? you have. That's why. I, I that's why I said A to C. What is the what is the A to C method to get from where we are at right now to pay eight hundred dollars for a two bedroom in in Manhattan? How do we do that? What's the what's the? I already. I just told you. Okay. So we ask her. Yeah. She says yes. And then she, she hooks no, us up and no, calls her no, friend, no. and the friend gives us in a lottery no, spot not, and a one shot deal. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. That's literally not. <laughs> what do you hear me say? I'm hearing you say, we're going to call her up. Because say, hey, man, we're trying to get into a nice building because we have a business we're trying to run. We need space for our cats and our business. So, can you give us a nice apartment in a nice area that's a lottery building, but put us in the front for $800 and give us a one shot deal also, please? To cover our back rent that we didn't pay. So fine. However, you're the you're saying it in a way that sounds <laughs> what? <delusional. laughs> and it's like okay, let me rephrase what I'm okay, saying. Okay, I'm so listening. You know, sure. It, it it doesn't come off that way. We have already applied to be right? Yes. That is a positive thing. Sure. Oftentimes, the city will do things for people that they feel like are in danger to, or in, are in immediate danger. Okay. You will fall into that category. Okay. So, it's not me asking her to do something outside of what she's supposed to do. It's more so, like, saying, like, okay... This is the scope of like what I'm trying to do. Are there any resources or ways available to reach this thing? I think that there probably is some type of resource or something available that she could tell us about Mm -hmm. that could get us into the situation that we want to be. Versus she's just going to call up her friend and say put them inside the building that's what that's i heard not, that's, I what, that's what i heard heard, heard, heard. That's not what i, I heard yo saying. jackie yo jackie i got these two people these two black kids they because got the they got a cat she said it once you because uh, um the way that she said it on the phone when you asked her about like does that work for a lot of me she was like yeah am i is that is that is that not true sure but i don't that's i don't think those two things correlate that it works for a lottery and that we can get in the lottery she if it didn't work that way she would be like yeah, it works like that, but I don't think that's something that will work in your situation. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. That it's like, if we got the lottery, then she would be like, okay, we also got this voucher. Not like, because you have this voucher, I can get you in the lottery. Because we don't. 
We don't know. We don't know. That's, that's, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't think I'm saying you're wrong. In uh, other news, uh, Melissa sent me this Instagram thing, and it was a it was a post from I think it was Complex, and they said it rained for the last five weekends, right? The reason I'm bringing that up to you guys is because y'all may or may not know that we used to be selling candles at craft fairs fairly frequently, almost every single weekend of the entire year, okay? So we know how rain affects sales, especially at Artisan Fleas. The last five weekends, we have not been there. We have been out. It's been raining every single weekend. First time in a very long time this has happened. Melissa had went to get groceries yesterday or the day before yesterday, and she had met a vendor that is at Artisan Fleas, right? They were also selling at the, the grocery place, there, like a, in the mall or whatever. And they were saying that they are about to leave Artisan Fleas. They sell candles. Remember last week I told you about them? They sell candles, they're about to leave. And they were saying it's been super slow for them being there while they have been there, right? Now, here's the thing about business, especially their business model. They hire, they wanna work with scabs. <laughs> yeah, I remember that word from back in the day when you had the oil companies and people were on, what's that word? They were in a union, right? They were unionized. And they were like, we want more money. And then the owner of the, of the uh, oil mill would say, I don't care, you're all fired. Right, actually, yeah, fact, they weren't fired. That's what, because you couldn't fire the union. They were just not, no, they were protesting. That's what happened. They were saying, we're not going to come to work today because we want more money. And the owner would be like, okay, bet. I'm going to hire a bunch of people who have no idea what they're doing. I'm going to bring them in here, pay them less, and still make money, right? And the people that were new, where they didn't understand the labor that goes into doing such a thing. So they would leave frequently, right? That is the business model that this place has. They are they are trying to hire and bring on the brands that are kind of fly-by-night brands, right? Now, there isn't anything necessarily wrong with that. If you're trying to nurture the brand, you're trying to give them an opportunity to do well, that's different. However, they are bottom feeding to find brands that will just pay them the money every weekend regardless of whether or not they can retain that brand for several weeks because to retain a brand for several weeks you would have to put in the kind of work that allows the brand to thrive at that establishment they aren't doing that the brand is new they're coming there they're spending 350 dollars for the weekend they have no sales there's nobody coming to the place there's no traffic there Right, they're not saying, you know what, you guys, it was tra no traffic here. We didn't bring any people here. That's our bad. You know what? I'll give you back thirty percent of the money or forty percent of the money. They're not saying, okay, guys, we're trying to throw an event here. We're trying these different things. No, they're like, all right, you're not paying us again this week. You leaving? All right, next, who's in next? Oh, hey, new brand person. Hey, come and try and get uh, a spot here. And they come in and go, oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm selling at Artisan Fleas. I'm happy. And then at the end. <laughs> Listen, we have been there for a lot of weeks, okay? We have seen this multiple times. A brand comes in, they're super excited on Saturday morning. They're like, yes, I got my stuff set up. They have this shimmer in their eye. They put out their new little, they put out their new thing, like whatever they sell, they have it on the table. They sell it up their, their background, whatever, right? And then 12 o'clock hits, they, they like, all right, let's go, you know? And then it's like one o'clock, they're like, all right, I ain't get a sale yet. They're like, all right. Okay, it's three o'clock. It's like okay, all right. It's four o'clock. Nobody's in here. I haven't gotten a sale yet. Okay, this is not looking too good though. Okay, but I'm gonna try to be optimistic. Tomorrow's gonna be better, right? <laughs> and it's like, listen, if you've been there, then you know. If you're making money on on Saturday, you're not making it on Sunday. That's not gonna happen. So then Sunday come and they're like, it's less people here than it was yesterday when I didn't make any sales. And then they might get a sale. They might get a sale. Maybe maybe two, right? And this has happened so many times where they come in, they think they're going to do well, they think it's going to be traffic, it's going to be a bunch of sales, going to be a booming environment, and then it's not that, right? And that's what I get as far as who they are trying to get in there. But what I feel like right now is actually sustaining the business is the foundation, which are the people like 
the people who are there frequently paying for months at a time a lot of them, in my opinion they don't care if they make money there or not because the majority of them have some other place they're making money at. I can't think of one brand that's really there for a long period of time that is only there. They either have a store in Manhattan, they have three stores in in, in Brooklyn, they have an online site that's doing amazing. They're, they have a whole brand outside of that place. And those are the ones that stay there constantly because they're like, listen, I don't care if I'm making money or not here. I'm making some money sometimes, that's good enough for me because I can just tell people this is my location, right? But that's not how artists and fleets market themselves. They market themselves as come in and be a new vendor and, you know, sh show off your your um your products to the new environment or new uh, community or whatever, and then you go in there and no one's there. So, one of the brands I was just talking about that's leaving is the brand that they make money in a multitude of other places. I'm talking about multiple places in Philly, multiple places in Brooklyn, online. They're doing just fine not being there. They are deciding to leave there. They're not coming back until next year, right? So what does that say? If the brands who are actually a foothold who are here constantly are deciding to not be here anymore, that is a huge red flag because the scabs who are leaving are, that's the business model they have. It shouldn't be that way, but that's what's happening. But then if you have your rock and your foundation that's leaving, you really going to be messed up. Like you, you can't come back from that because what's going to happen is when they leave, right? Those foundational people leave. Anybody that wants to come to that market is only going to see the scabs in the market, right? The people who are not really selling, people who are not there often, who don't really have a business, who are just selling a product for a weekend or two or whatever. They are still trying to figure out their business. They're not really sure what it is yet, right? You're going to go there and you're going to see that the market has no continuity. There's no one that really has a really nice setup because they are just trying to figure it out. They have a tablecloth and they have a shelf. That's it. It's all they have. So you're going to go there thinking that you're going to see a bunch of stuff and you're going to go, hmm, I don't know if I really want to sell here, right? And now the scabs are only coming there because they see the other vendors who are popular might be getting traffic because those people who are popular, been there for a long time, they have people coming back to them every weekend. So that drives traffic to the market, but they're not coming here for you. They're coming for them. So I said the five weeks of rain thing crazy and it's honestly it, it's the five weeks of rain during one of the most busiest times that we've seen being at the market so you know that's crazy um now as you guys know your favorite time of the podcast is the league of villains yay woo league of villains yay woo league of villains hey guys so there's a lot that's been going on. I am now officially 26 years old. Ooh. So, yeah. Um, shout out to my best friends, Ariel and Ebony. They both took me out this week for my birthday. And um, I also got a lot of work done this week too. Had I, this week, probably I had the most meetings. <laughs> that I've had in a long time. I feel like the last two weeks, you know, I didn't really have anything on my books. This week that just passed, I had like three meetings in a day. The next day I had two meetings. And then honestly, I was supposed to have a meeting this yesterday morning and the day before, and I missed both of them. I missed the one for, for, for Friday. The one for Saturday, I was there for the meeting. The person I was meeting with had technical difficulties, said I waited almost an hour for them to get it fixed. And then they never called. They said they were going to call me back and they never did. So that was fun. Um, that meeting was with Pinterest. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that we're going to set up another meeting for another time. Um, what else? So big things. I decided that 
Okay, so you guys already know that I'm in my course for the Beyonce Cam um, from the Beyonce Cam uh, program that I was in. So within the next two weeks, there's going to be a pitch competition. It's going to be November seventh um, in the city somewhere. Donovan is going to be going this time, and everyone is not going to pitch, but they but you know you should be prepared to pitch. I am like 90% sure that I'm probably going to pitch, like 95%, and that's because they do this thing in the beginning of class where you say your wins for the week. And when we won the pitch competition, you know, I did share it with the class. So I would be I would be surprised if the person who won a pitch competition and won $15,000 is not going to be pitching at the pitch competition that they're going to have. So I'm pretty, I'm like 90% sure that I'm going to be pitching. Um, aside from that, I had, so the the business owner that they had facilitating class last week, amazing. Um, she is the CEO, founder, I don't know if she's the, still the CEO, but she was the founder of Curl Mix, and she was, she was talking about funding. Her man went on um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And he won $100,000 from being on the show. And they used like 20, 30K out of that to fund the beginning of her business. And that business has made over several million, like I think over $30 million to this day. Which one is that? Huh? Which one is that? Curl Mix. So she was who was talking to us on Zoom. And I, I've grown to really love this class. Like at the beginning... It was given, you know, very foundational stuff. So I was just kind of like, okay, this is like another foundational class, very similar to the one that I had in the beginning of the year. And it got better and better. Like the people that they have on just got better and better. Like big business. They, they're they they're like running big business. They had to fund it. They had to go through the, they went through the same things that, we, that we're going through. Like she said, so the person that was on there before her was a CEO um, of Hair Brella. Her name was Tracy. She said, listen, whenever whenever my bank account went to zero, I called Tracy and we would cry together because that happens often as an entrepreneur. And, and mind you, she's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. But she said in the midst, it's not even like it's just in the beginning. She said like that has gone, she's raised money and it's gone to zero multiple times. So it's, it's just the, either ebb and flow is just the nature of the business that we're in or just the nature of doing business. So that, you know, made me feel better. <laughs> um, also another, another cool thing that she said too, what was that? Um, Bruh, so she was telling, she was talking to us about raising capital, raising funds, and she said Kickstarter is a good place. Like crowdfunding is really good. We've we've already crowdfunded. That's Kiva, but that's a loan. So we're trying to get free money. We are like done with loans. We're trying to get free money, and that is based off of the work that we've done in the business, and that's like that is like my guiding star right now like how to get that so she said angel investors before venture capitalists and then she said crowdfunding pitch competitions things like that things you know some things we're already familiar with um she went on a website called WeFunder, and she was trying to raise a million dollars in her first month she raised 4.6 million dollars on WeFunder, free money, 4.6. So she knows about raising money. She says she used to travel out of state to do pitch competitions. Um, she said that a lot of the times the angel investors that ended up investing into her business, she met at the pitch competitions. They kind of approached her afterwards. So, you know, might look into doing some in-person pitch competitions. Um, so there's that. What else? There's just so much. Uh, even, even with the nature of dealing with angel investors, like their net worth is so high that they're just trying to give away, like, let's say 5%. So it, it doesn't, they're not, they don't care that they gave you a 50 K check. They forget because it's significantly less than their net worth. And they gave it to you for you to do whatever you need to do with. And they, they're not trying to get it back. They're not trying to like none of that. And I'm like, oh my gosh 
just boom. So I decided that, um, oh yeah, we decided we're, we're going to create a Kickstarter. Um, there's another, so one of the mentors in the program, she's very familiar with funding, very familiar with um, yeah, fundraising and stuff like that. And because the program is coming to a close, they are having like some last minute one-on-ones. I just went to a one-on-one after the funding um, uh, uh, funding class and was able to ask a couple questions there. And I very much appreciated the mentor because, the mentor because she she was talking, like she looked at the business. You can tell when someone did their due diligence and knows what they're talking about, especially specifically to you. And I really, really appreciate that because there's some times where I'll go into these different resources or different help routes that are um, geared towards small businesses and small business owners. And they don't even know what you're selling. They don't know the price points. They don't know your branding, your message. Nothing is like you and and just kind of taking the minute to even just go through someone's socials real quick could just kind of give you a better mindset of how to have that facilitate that conversation where a lot of people don't do that and it kind of makes it hard to even have these conversations because you're starting from zero as opposed to starting from at least like a basic knowledge of what I'm doing or what I'm trying to trying to do so I very much appreciated that we were able to have like just jump into the conversation and she was able to give me like specific thoughts that she had about the business based off of what she saw that was being done so I really really love that really really appreciate that and they reached out to me saying that they're gonna have one-on-ones and kind of gave me like a priority spot to um to sign up because my business is further along so I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this kickstarter draft like just start the because I want to make it as as amazing as possible so we can get as much money as possible. And I'm going to get that started and have a draft to show her for our one-on-one because that's like her specialty. So that, and that's another thing too. She has angel investor friends. It's a whole thing. It has a, it's a whole thing. So I'm like, I want to I want to have everything done so I can present it to her. She can see it. Best case scenario. Like good, good, good scenario is that she's telling me things that I could fix no, good scenario is that she loves it. I don't have to fix anything. I could just put it live. Better scenario, she has like different tidbits, like targeted things that I could change that will really, you know, move it forward. Best case scenario, she does that and also puts her visa, her her her, her uh, angel investor friends on so that they can invest in the business. You feel me? So that's just kind of how I'm looking at that. I'm really excited to get that done, and I feel like. I was very disappointed when I went to the Beyonce event and they were giving out the $10,000 and it's like, damn, I'm here. I just had this dinner and I didn't really get anything from it. I was so, I felt so, you know, dis, dis, not discouraged, but like disappointed. I felt disappointed. You know, it just kind of felt like, okay, I guess it was like a fun event or like, you know, maybe it's a YouTube title that we could use. But I genuinely feel like I got a lot out of this program. I'm so happy that I went. I'm so happy that I stuck to it. And um, I'm just so happy like to just kind of see what comes from it because that program, like I said, is like a whole bunch, just even the peers in the program, the other women and men all black that have businesses like I went on this last call the the last um session and there is a woman there she owns a treat a treat shop in Chicago and she just got a six-figure grant for her business do you know how insane that is a six-figure grant six figures So I'm just like, it's just so inspiring. It just shows like what you could do with your business, how far you could go. It's just, I just love it. Um, So there's that. Uh, The Queen's Chamber of Commerce had also reached out to us. And I set up a call with them. They told me to apply to a different grant. So I applied to it, set up a call with them because they wanted to see how they'd be able to support our business. Now, remember the two main things that the person... um, the C the CEO what's her name again her name is I know it damn I forgot the two main things that she said was venture capital not nah, not venture capitalists two main things that she said was angel investors and pitch competitions like so I'm like okay I'm speaking to the guy from the uh, Queen's Chamber of Commerce um, he's asking like how can he support the business 
um, and so on and so forth. And he's like, well, you know, the best thing I could do right now is probably like try to get you into like, you know, um, this black owned grocery store that's like in Queens. I'm like, okay, that sounds, you know, that sounds cool. Um, I'm a little bit wary because our price point is so high, but you know, opportunity is an opportunity. And then he asked me if I had any questions, right? So I'm like, okay. I'm like, let's 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 try this out. I'm like, okay, are there do you have any connections to angel investors or any um pitch competitions that I could participate in? He's like, Oh. And I feel like the way that he said it kind of like flipped the switch in his brain as to like maybe what tier or like in what capacity the business is. And he was like, Oh, well, there's this opportunity to sell at JFK airport would you be interested in that and I'm like oh yeah for sure because we already I'm gonna let Donovan tell you you know about the 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 past with the JFK airport but that's been something on my mind and so once he said I was like, oh yeah oh yeah I want to do that and he's like oh it's gonna be a full-time thing I'm like I I do this full-time and he's like oh no 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 like it's gonna be and I'm like I already know how it's gonna be I'm I'm good let's let's do this so the thing that I need, or the thing that we need in order to move forward with that is our um, WMBE certification. So I am in the process of getting that. And, you know, once we have that, hopefully we can have that by November and we can get into the next cohort and start selling at the airport, which would be absolutely insane. And so, yeah, there's that. And that's pretty much like the main things from this week. Um, it's yesterday was probably the worst day of my life and it had to do with just like me carrying groceries not even had to i bought i bought too much stuff <laughs> i bought one that i could carry and i didn't have the cart so donovan had to he had to beat me so he could help me carry them um so i i just like knocked out after that yesterday but that's pretty much how this week went and i am like i said every week i come on here and i'm super optimistic and there is there's a path there's a path there's a we're following it like at first we we're in the right direction now we're in the right direction and there's like a path there's something to follow to get us over there like i don't know you know if there's going to be like a ditch or something that we're going to need to fill or whatever along that path but we're on the path and that's all that matters so yeah so that's melissa kind of stated Hopefully, we can get to JFK this year. Um, is there anything that would stop us from getting it? Um, it seems like he said it's a cohort, and cohorts are typically like a certain time period to a certain time period. So depending, because we don't already have the certification, depending on when we get it and when that cohort starts mm -hmm. which is the thing. So, And I honestly don't know how quick or slow they are about getting it. I don't know if it's like, a, oh, okay, you did your application, we'll get back to you within five business days, or, you know, you know how sometimes the government works. Yeah. Sometimes it's instant, and sometimes it's not, so that would be the, the only thing. Yeah. Okay, so yes, I'm looking forward to that because, and it's probably like a month, right? Do you know how long it would be? Because I'm like, listen, take, give me the money. Honestly, I think he said if we miss the November one, then we might be able to do December. Or something like listen, that. we are young enough to work every day. Every single day. Right. We have nothing and else to do. It's so easy to get there. Right. It's right up the block. You take the. Right. And it's free. That's the best. The best part is that it costs zero dollars. So it's like, listen, this is it's better than selling online to some degree. Financially, it's better than selling online just because. There's no shipping. Now, there was a woman who had sold there before, and she had said, this is during our Illuminati meeting that we had earlier in the year. She has said that when she went to sell her jewelry there, that they told her, listen, ma'am, we'll give you a heads up. What you need to do is, before you start selling anything here, double all of your prices. She was like, ah, should I do it? I don't know how to do it. She's like, ah, okay, I'm going to double my prices, right? She said she did not have enough inventory. She said she should have tripled her prices 
because that's how they were getting down at the airport. And she said there was someone else there who was selling candles and they sold out. So it's kind of like, you know, we'll see. Uh, there was a the thing about Alex Hormozzi. I, th- I like this a lot and I, I'm probably going to butcher this, but he was saying how he ranks people that he gets information from. Right. So I was talking to my friend Tim about this, um, just kind of like affirmations and, you know, just whatever things that people use to get themselves in the right mindset. Um, for me, you know, there are times where I get a lot of energy and I want to do stuff, right? You know, I feel really bad about something. I feel really good about something. I'm motivated or inspired and I might write it down or I might put on a sticky note. And what happens is that after a certain amount of time, the, the thing I wrote down no longer has the energy that I want to, that I had when I wrote it down. So when I look at it, I don't feel the same way. I don't have the same weight or the impact of the thing that I was trying to gain by writing it down or putting on a sticky note or journaling, whatever the situation is, right? And this is something that I would write down and and try to remember a lot. This is something I would write down and try to remember a lot because I think that this is my biggest blind spot. It would be trying to choose who to take advice from and who to work with, who to partner with, right? At the lowest level, number seven, comments on social media, which is basically comments from strangers who don't know me and don't have what I want. Number six, people giving their two cents who do know me but don't have what I want. Number five, someone who knows me and knows someone who went to where I'm trying to go. Number four, someone who's been there. Number three, someone who took someone else there. Number two, someone who took someone just like me to exactly where I want to go. And number one, someone who has been there took someone else there just like me multiple times. Do I trust somebody who has taken someone else there because I am the someone else more than someone who's only taken themselves there? Because if someone's taken someone else there, then I could slot in and there's a likelihood they could do it again. If they've only taken themselves there and not taken anyone else there, then they might not be a very good teacher, which happens all the time. Michael Jordan has an insane record playing basketball, has a very poor record owning a basketball team. I'm big on give, give, give. And- right. So I think that f- listening to um in this situation i was bringing it up because of the jfk thing and for me i would probably say it's maybe like level three or so because there was a brand that was there that sold well right but you have to think it did this brand sell candles right then it's like okay there was a brand that sold candles that did well the next thing would be like, how similar to us are they? What are their price points? Um, how well do they sell? What does their candle look like? And things like of, of that nature. And I think that that would be a good framework to operate from when choosing who to partner with or what business to work at or where to sell the candles at because we can kind of have an idea if, if a candle brand that is just like ours who has higher priced candles went to a place and sold a lot of candles, that would be great. You know, it'd be phenomenal if a candle brand like ours went to a place, sold a lot of candles, multiple if multiple brands like us did that. If five, 10, 20 people who were just like us went there and sold a bunch of money, sold, sold a bunch of candles, made a bunch of money, we would probably go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, yes, we can go there and make money. Now, on the flip side, it's like, no one like me has sold here. No one like me has made any money here. No one that is even, is even selling anything like that would be something that we don't want to be at. So like I said for me, that was something that I really want to try and internalize because I think that could definitely help us make a lot of headway. And the last thing for today is a TikTok update. So yeah, I know I hate TikTok, but I think there is a way to make a lot of money on there. I think that we may have had it wrong, possibly. I'm still doing some some uh, digging, but we were going to go on TikTok live to make money. Yeah, I know we got a sale two days in a row on our first day doing it, but we have not gotten a sale since then. People have said they were going to buy one, but have not bought. We got a lot of followers, though. Not a lot, but we've gotten some followers, so that's good. And I'm learning a couple of things through doing it, so there's always that upside. But from the people that I have seen, again, if TikTok is the platform that is providing people with sales, it's like, okay, are they doing it through lives? Not really. They seem to mostly be doing it through affiliates. 
So they have a they they TikTok has an affiliate program where you can work with creators for free. All you do is give them a commission of every sale, and they permit they make videos. The guy I told you about that has that does fifty k a month on there. He had a video recently with a guy. A guy was kind of promoting his brand, and he had a super deep voice, right? So he's reading it, mad sultry. The video got a probably had two million views at, at this point. When I checked last, it was at one point five million views. That he probably paid two hundred dollars for that if you paid at all, and that's the kind of thing that we need to be doing. Hopefully, like I said, we have the fifteen k. As I'm saying, if we have the fifteen k, and we pay five creators. And one of the creators have a great return. That's good. That's amazing for us. And that's kind of how I want to go about it. When that time comes, we sit down and look. Okay, what is the game plan when the money finally hits the account? Because things change very frequently. So, and then the last thing, again, I've been editing the vlog in the mornings. So I, so I'm hoping my screen time will be down a lot next week. But I also think it allows me to make a better vlog and also get the vlogs out faster. So you know, always trying to think about how I can make the vlogs on the Ember Candle Co channel come out faster and be better. And that's one thing I've learned. So I spend, I set a timer. I spend about two hours every morning just editing the vlog. And it takes me. I haven't finished it yet, just because I, you know, I haven't done two hours the last day. But it takes me. It seems about two days, maybe three in the morning to do it. And that's just me doing two hours in the morning. And I'm not worrying about like previous weeks where it's Monday night or it's, so, it's Tuesday morning. I'm trying to watch the vlog, get it uploaded by then. And I'm, I'm wasting time not being able to go on TikTok live and learn about email marketing and learn about photography. I can kind of echo that stuff out by doing the vlog in the morning. So very happy for that. But you can find all the behind the scenes content on our social media. Mine is Donovan Gray, D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And yeah, my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Melissa Burnett. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. You know what it is? Hashtag Bamboo Project 2023. The road to 500K. And with that being said, Bamboo Project 2023.